All right. So today's guest, I must say in thinking up what her bio slash introduction should be, uh, I was at a bit of an impasse because I didn't know where to start. Her resume is a mile long. She's been featured on essentially every network ever. Uh, the uh, Cleveland News. She's, uh, she's all over Instagram. She's a titan in the world of beauty. She claims that she's a, uh, a guru, but I would argue she's probably more of a, like I said, titan in the universe of beauty. Martha Butchko from La Look Skincare and Makeup Boutique out in, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Uh, yes. Thanks for being on the show today, Martha. How in the heck are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm alive. We are doing well. We are, Things are alive. Good out here yeah. In Denver. <laughs> yeah, we, we're still alive despite COVID's attempts to change the course. We're, we're, uh, we're waving our finger and, and moving forward despite. So I'm glad to hear the same is the story for you. So let's, let's do this. I'm actually going gonna, gonna to flip the script a little bit from what I normally do. Usually we start with your bio, how you got in the world of beauty, et cetera. But I'm sure from your perspective being interviewed before, that's probably a bit of a boring question. Listeners, here's what you need to know about Martha here out of the gate for context. And I'm going to ask this introductory or first question. Um, she runs a monster, massive uh, boutique. Um, she offers a load of different services. I won't get into all of them. Uh, but she is one to listen to. So if you are in the universe of beauty, this is the show for you to so listen up. So I'm going to actually start this show with a question that you might find a little odd, um, but I can't resist asking. So you've been in beauty now for, according to your LinkedIn bio, um, with uh, La Look for 25 years, although I'm sure you've actually been in for longer, which is baffling because yeah. you don't look a day over 30. So we're going to talk about that <laughs> as well <laughs> later you. on. But I'm curious. So you, you've been in this universe for a while. What would you yes. say has been the highlight or the golden year so far as you've built your business over the last Wow. Month? There's so much. Well, just the trends and the changes. And I, I tend to rebrand like usually every eight to 10 years because the beauty industry has changed so much. So I love the fact that it's constantly changing and you definitely have to keep up with the change and switch up things. So to me that I love doing that. That's a, that's one of my favorite things to do is, you know, changes, products, new services. So I think that's the highlight and definitely I love helping women feel and look better from the inside out. So that's always the biggest pleasure you get out of this industry, yeah. making, fe yeah. you know, females feel better about themselves. Sure. Sure. So you mentioned changes and trends. And like yeah. you said, I mean, I could not agree more. There's always mm -hmm. another fad, the next hottest product, you know, the right. next thing that, that, that promises to cure blindness, make you six inches taller and look like Penelope <laughs> Cruz in her prime, right. which is, That's you know, usually a bit of a reach if we're being honest. There's right. a lot of false claims out there with devices there in particular are. these days. Uh, yes. But how do you, how do you then keep your ear on the track or rather your thumb on the pulse of the changes happening? Is there a go-to well, source or how do you do that? Yeah, I'm, I mean, always looking at things and researching and then, you know, I'll think of things and then the next thing I know, I'm implementing it and then that's something that's going to be a hot trend. So I have, uh, I have a vision that I see things that will, you know, I know will be the trend and it will take off. Huh. So I do have that gift. <laughs> Premonition. She's a forecaster. I do, I she has a crystal ball. I wish you guys could see this in her office. She's got a crystal ball. It's the size of <laughs> Alabama and it tells her exactly what's going to come, which is why she's a great investor. I'm kidding. This is an investment <laughs> show. But in any case, yeah. So, so, so you're, you're saying that essentially you, you are the trailblazer. You essentially, <laughs> you make the trends happen, which. I don't know if I make it happen, but I do think of things and then it just, it comes to fruition. So it does yeah. happen quite often. Huh. Interesting. So how do you, or to what do you attribute that to? I mean, obviously you have I, I mean, sensitivity of research and yeah. I, I read a lot and I'm always, you know, into whatever the latest, greatest things are, but then, you know, I'm, I'm just always looking at what's happening and I look to other countries. Um, you know, a lot of times in Europe, they're way 
ahead of what we are. Yeah. So my parents are from Hungary. So I am, you know, my parents are first generation from Hungary. So they escaped Budapest, you know, back in 1957. So I've been to Hungary several times. So they are the leaders in skincare. Really? Treatments, yes. Huh. Is that is that because they have a uh, like a? Well, let me just ask this question: Why yes. is that? You think? Because you would think well, that it'd be Beverly Hills or California, LA, <laughs> well, or whatever. But it's so Budapest. In Hungary, there are those healing waters, and they have spas. So those healing waters come from the ground. Huh. So a lot of um, beauty treatments have developed from Hungary. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So specifically in Budapest, because I've been there and I love Budapest. Mm-hmm. And I frankly love mm-hmm. Prague, which is maybe a sister city, some would say, which is maybe a bit of a reach. But mm-hmm. I've been to those baths, those, those soaking yeah. pools. and Right. Uh, the healing there's something water. about the water there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And in Europe, everyone gets facials. Where now, this is the trend now here, but back 20 years ago, getting a facial is like getting a haircut. It was a necessity, yeah. not like just a luxury. Huh. So, you know, European women are always way ahead and advanced in skincare treatments. But now, you know, that is catching on here. And, you know, over the last 20 years, everything has changed. And it is becoming more, you know, people are getting facials monthly. Not so much as just a spa day. Sure, sure. So is that... Is that trend detection mechanism that you have where you, if I'm gathering what you've said and distilling mm-hmm. it correctly, essentially looking out across the pond into some of the European nations, um, yes. is that same mechanism, let's call it, of detecting where the trends might be in skincare, is that applicable too with devices for facials, body contouring, and the rest yes. of it? Are you seeing the same thing? Yes, yes definitely. I mean, I remember doing microdermabrasion back when I first opened. This was like probably 19, like 97, 98. And I had a machine called Power Peel. I don't know if you ever remember that machine. And it was from, and I was like one of the first to have microdermabrasion and it was done with aluminum crystals. And so that was again, you know, setting the trend for the United States. Huh. Of bringing in microdermabrasion. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, our device, frankly, was and is created in Italy, and they had it for <laughs> six years before we brought it to the states. And so that does right. seem to square with with my um, experience in in body contouring specifically, which you know I'm not an expert mm-hmm. in skincare um, retail type products like facials, like mm-hmm. you're actually selling on your website, which we'll talk about here downstream. Uh, but that's interesting. So, h- how would you suggest then for the listeners who they don't want to be behind the eight ball because it's very easy to become obsolete, antiquated, mm-hmm. a dinosaur in your spa, wellness center, whatever, by having antiquated technology. Are there certain specific resources that you would steer listeners towards to keep their ear on the track of where the trends and shifts might be happening? Yes, definitely. Like, you know, all the skin magazines like Dermalogica, Skin Inc., New Beauty. I mean, those are great resources to look at. Um, and you know, I just, like I said, I just research, I Google, you know, I look up things. I'm always trying to see, you know, what the latest, greatest, newest technologies are. And then I'm fortunate in many ways too, because sometimes companies reach out to me and ask me to try a product or, Mm -hmm. you know, a, a service. And that's great too, because, you know, they'll ask me to you know, give my comments and feedback. But definitely, you know, reaching, looking and researching, you know, all the beauty trends out there in magazines definitely help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if listeners are trying to get their their thumb on the pulse of things like search traffic for certain types of products, for example, um, one thing that people may not be aware of is the power of Google Trends. So let's say there's a product, I don't know, pick your favorite new toy, whatever that shiny toy uh, that right. you might be lo- looking at. You might mm-hmm. pop that into Google and then extrapolate or infer how you uh, 
uh, make sense of the data that is spit out. Obviously, if there's a product that you type in that's declining in search volume on Google, mm -hmm. probably not a trendsetter, <laughs> probably on the out. <laughs> Right. I want to consider right. moving away from that as, a, as mm -hmm. an idea for acquisition. So. Yeah, but just like Googling, you know, facial trends, um, skincare products, you know, just new machinery, like just Googling certain things. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So to that point then, what would you say currently is the most exciting segment in beauty? Is there a specific type of treatment or a specific device or something that you're yeah. seeing is the so, hottest yeah. new thing? So right now we're looking at a lot of... Um, like channeling, micro channeling, nano. Um, so micro needling, you know, is a big trend, but it does create downtime. And so the nanotechnology is really great for someone who has sensitive skin, doesn't want any downtime, but still creating the channeling into the skin and, you know, penetrating products. So that's a huge trend right now. Um, any type of like microdermabrasion will always be current and trendy and effective, but there's different forms of doing microdermabrasion. So there's also oxygenation and, um, we have a, a machine that's does the three in one super facial and it's with oxygen pods. So that's another form of exfoliation. So anything to do with exfoliating and making the skin younger, brighter, tighter is definitely where it is at right now with yeah. minimal downtime. Huh. Yeah, there's definitely a shift away from invasive yes. mechanisms, et cetera, the scalpel, lipo, right. and a shift <laughs> of interest at least towards mm -hmm. uh, non-invasive modalities in, in various domains, certainly yeah. in body contouring. Um, and I'd imagine it's, it's certainly the same with facials and other uh, devices yes. and treatment mm -hmm. types as well. Huh. Well, so what are, you, what are you currently most excited about yourself? Is there something that you have been researching a lot? Has you giddy? Has you excited? Kid in a candy uh, store type feeling? <laughs> well, definitely, you know, machinery for sure. Um, we, we do Venus Legacy, which is for body and face. And you can do a ton of contouring with that. So that is very popular because you get instant results, zero downtime. The client leaves looking perfectly fine, maybe just a little bit flush in the face for 30 minutes and she's off and ready to go. Wow. So those are treatments that are very effective. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. It seems like from research, now this is admittedly pre-COVID, um, mm -hmm. from uh, the American Med Spa um, I think Association, their state of the industry report, they're saying that beauty consumers are listing body contour as their uh, number one procedure they want to try, which, you know, who knows that's yep. still the case in, in COVID land that we're living in now. I agree. I agree. Oh, you do agree? Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I do agree. Do you, here, so here's the question. Do you think the impact of COVID on people's interest in body contouring has increased as a result of gym closures, uh, I'm sure most of our diets have taken yeah. a nosedive, right? Et cetera. <laughs> Drinking is up, et cetera. Yeah. Clients will come yeah. in and they'll be like, oh my God, I gained 20 pounds being in quarantine, you know, COVID. Wow. So yeah, it's huge. Cellulite treatments, um, body contouring, you know, whether it's for the jawline area, yeah. the, you know, double chin, cellulite, um, thighs hips, abdominal, all that is very huge. Yeah. It's, uh, it's always shocking when I look in the mirror and realize, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. That home gym that I built out, I should probably get in there and use the damn thing one of these days. Right. But, uh, yeah. COVID COVID lockdowns and wine, uh, make mm -hmm. for a lethal combination for, yeah. for weight gain and the rest of it. Certainly. Huh. Well, let's, let's change gears here. Cause I, I, I want to really zero in on your experience building your business, your brand, your own personal brand, which you have as well. Um, and how you've gone about architecting that and the shifts that have happened over the last 25 plus years. Um, okay. Cause as I, as I read your bio, you certainly, like you said, at the start of the show today, you have changed your, uh, let's say vector or uh, your yes. way that you reimagine yourself. Times, yes. Yeah, it's cyclical. So, I mean, you started out 
Um, 25 years ago, to correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm, I'm leaning on your bio, which um, mm -hmm. is also uh, leaning on my ability to read, which may or may not be par. <laughs> I am educated, so they say, uh, <laughs> my degree. Let's see if I can make this happen. So you started out as a uh, makeup artist, esthetician, fitness and nutritional coach. You yes. saw an opportunity in skincare distribution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so the point is you've shifted a ton of times. So I maybe did. talk us through how how it happened you, well, <laughs> how it happened but specifically uh -huh. here's here's what i'm really curious about how did you know it was time to shift time to change so again like i was saying like timing is everything and having that vision of seeing things so when i first started the distribution i would go into salons and set them up to be successful in skincare and facials, I would make guest appearances. And I would, you know, get their facial room ready. I would make everything happen for them to be successful. Mm. And so the industry was changing and, you know, more and more people were interested in skincare needs in the hair salon. But what I found was that a hair salon really wasn't following through the right way of building that clientele for skin. Right. So then when I opened my day spa, no one really knew what a day spa was. You know, you would see spas like on cruise ships or in a hotel or a destination resort, but no one really had just a day spa. Mm. And a lot of people told me I would not be successful without having hair incorporated into the day spa. But I went ahead and opened doing skin and being a day spa. And it took off after a few years. I went from 1,000 square feet to 5,000 square feet. In one year? In, in, in two years, yes. In two years, wow. And it just boomed. And then, you know, people started to realize, oh, you know, this is what a day spa is. And the trend took off. And then... Then I switched gears again because laser hair removal was really popular. And this was like in 19, like 2000, 2001. And I decided because that was required like a nurse and a doctor, I hooked up with a plastic surgeon to come in to my day spa on a regular basis so that we could offer laser hair removal and do injectables. So I became a med spa and we were one of the first in the US, there were only 3% that were med spas. So we brought the trend into my spa and I changed my logo, we incorporated the word med spa and then that boomed and that was a big trend. And then we also did you know, a lot of um, peels because that was huge back then obaji was like huge doing blue peels um so that was a big trend and then we shifted again and 9 11 happened and the whole world changed and no one was traveling so everyone wanted to go to a spa and hang out and be with their friends and have parties so then I made it again, switched the logo and made it more of a relaxation wellness center. Huh. So then that was the trend. <laughs> so then in 2008, nine, the world changed again and our economy tanked. Yeah. So now I'm in this huge 5,000 square foot spa um, people are broke. They don't want to spend money. My lease is coming to an end. And I decided I'm either going to just close altogether and do my fitness, go that route, or I'm going to rebrand. And I moved to Chagrin Falls to a small little village that's really quaint and has tons of stores and boutiques. And I made it more of a boutique feel versus a spa hmm. and changed the logo again and the name. 
but always keeping the law look, but changing the, you know, skincare and makeup boutique versus having it relaxation and wellness or having it as a med spa. So I changed again, my concept. It's almost like you've, you've created a, an arc, let's say, so in, the, in this mm-hmm. like story sense, but you have Correct. different episodes. So Star yeah. Wars, there's a thousand <laughs> right. different Star Wars. It's all right. Star Wars for you. It's right. all a look. It's just yes. different adaptations to changes in macro markets, et cetera, consumer interests, yeah. et cetera. But the thing that I think that you've done very well just from hearing you speak, do my research before the show today, you never lost touch with who you are or who you want Correct. to be. You're, mm-hmm. you're very true to that always and you don't shift away from that. And I think That's- one of the reasons you've been able to pull that off, and this is a guess here, this is a, a cold read, maybe I'm a mile off, I don't know, you tell me, is that, and, and it's, it's so obvious in hearing you talk and I can mm-hmm. join that with what I'm reading on your bio here. So let me, let me take a stab at what I'm suspecting um, is the, the culprit in your capacity to stay true to what you are, but simultaneously adapt and evolve to market conditions that warrant it. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's contained in three words on your bio. Okay. Now this might sound like a reach, but bear with me. She, here, here's the quote listeners <laughs> for those that can't see my screen. Cause of course this is just audio. All right. Mm-hmm. So here's the quote. She decided Two, dot, 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 end quote. So what am I getting at? Well, I think a ton of people, myself included in certain domains, suffer from the nauseating curse of paralysis via the demon of hyperanalysis. So, my God, there's so many options. I could do this. I could rebrand as this. I could change myself and be someone else, which, by the way, Oscar Wilde loves you. Side note, Martha. <laughs> um, I know you're, you're, it looks like your motif or theme or headline of your your uh, brand, let's say, is be your own kind of beautiful, which would, uh, I think, tickle mm-hmm. Oscar Wilde, who says something akin to, in a world of everyone else, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. So you're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're a distant relative, maybe-ish, of Oscar Wilde, mm-hmm. who I adore. He's amazing. He's also very dead. So, uh, But in any case, you decided to. So I think, you know, as I hear you talk, there's these little droppings of where you say, yeah, I, dis- I just decided. I did it. Mm-hmm. I decided, and that was it. And I just moved the ball that forward and you didn't care when people told you that it wouldn't work to create a day spa. No one's going to do it. You're, you're out of your mind. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. 1,000 square fail. feet. To five. <laughs> yeah. And you did it anyway. And sp- maybe not in spite of them, but you did it despite their objections, which by the right. way, the internet, electricity, the model T, right? All mm-hmm. these inventions, adaptations, evolutions, et cetera, were, and have always and will always face opposition and Mm -hmm. resistance. And I think the winners, AKA you, Martha, are those that can say, eh, yeah, I don't care. I decided to, so that's what it's going to be. I'm moving forward. Are you in or out? Uh, I guess I'm in, right? So I think you you found a way to do that. So the question is, after that three-hour preamble, what advice would you give to listeners who are struggling right now in COVID, maybe laden with anxiety, they know they've got to change. They've got to adapt. They've got to evolve. Otherwise, they're going to be toast. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them to have that same commitment to be decisive like you are in a world where there is an ocean of options to choose from? Well, yeah. I mean, you have to, you know, you got, you got to bite the bullet sometimes. So you have to analyze, you know, the business and see, you know, if, if you're offering skincare in a hair salon and it's not taking off, then maybe you need to focus more just on the hair and be the best at that. Because you can't do everything and be great at everything. So I feel like you just have to analyze the situation and you know what is really successful in your business and then take that to the next level. Yeah. So as you, as you built out your menu, Mm -hmm. which I can't resist, I have to at least share with the listeners, some of the services that you do, by the way, her menu is extravagant and it's, her website is amazing. 
Um, probably Thank the best you. website I've seen all, all month, frankly. But Martha's doing bridal makeup, wedding makeup, eyebrow waxing, body waxing, facial treatments, anti-aging treatments, spray tanning, microblading, microneedling, waxing, dye sports, Botox, microderm. The list goes on and on and on. You certainly didn't launch all that at once, obviously. So I think yeah. for, other, <laughs> for other listeners that are thinking, eh, I'm a little nervous. I'm a bit of a one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you build out your menu? And were there certain heuristics that you leaned on to decide or to know oh, when yeah. adding this device made sense? Yeah, I've changed the menu numerous times over the years. You know, back in the day at my old spa, we offered nail services. But again, when the, the trend was changing, when I moved out of that spa in 2010, there were nail salons everywhere. When I first opened, I had six full-time nail techs that were busy nonstop. Mm. But then more chains started opening and nail salons, that, that's all they did, where you could just walk in and get nail services. So the trend started to change. So I decided once I move out of that spa, I'm not doing nail services anymore. So I, I let that go because it wasn't profitable enough and there was too much other competition out there. So I was going to focus more on the skin aspect. Mm. Um, waxing is always a huge trend. So I feel that any salon um, should offer waxing, but to make sure that, you know, they're using the right wax, they have the right person doing the treatment. So all of that is important again, you know, incorporating that into your business. So if you're going to add things, you need to research and you need to, you know, really focus and put something together to make that plan happen. Yeah. Not yeah. just put it on the menu. Sure. And I think a mistake pretty much, well, I don't want to go as far and be as audacious as to say everyone makes this mistake, but I think a lot more people than should be making the following mistake, make the following mistake, which is that they bite off more than they can chew and they ignore the law of Correct. power, which is that you should concentrate your forces. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's something to be said about being intentional and deliberate about what you decide to bolt on. And right. so from, from your perspective, the way you approach deciding whether to add this service, this treatment or anything in between, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming is in part, you're getting some feedback from your customers. Is yes. that, is that a part of the, okay. So how, how does that work? Is there a, like some sort of system that you have for that or how do you do that? It is, yeah. I mean, I definitely listen to my clients and ask them what they'd like, but they also look to me to see what's new. Mm. So they know like, oh, Martha's going to have, you know, she's going to have hot new products. She's going to, you know, she's done her research. She'll have some new technology coming in. So yes, I listen to my clients and then I take that and do my research and then bring on new things. So yeah, that is important, listening. Yeah. Yeah, and this is something that I was uh, chatting with with my last guest is that I think a better, and, and do tell me if you disagree, but a more reliable way of getting an idea of what your customers actually want because ultimately the menu that you architect and create is and should be the product of not what you want, listeners, but what your customers are demanding. But the mm -hmm. problem or the paradox maybe is that they'll tell you oftentimes, this is human nature, and everyone I would assume would agree, that mm -hmm. what people say and do are generally a mile apart. And they're not, it's not one-to-one. -one. And so the right. decision that I was making with, with my last guest is that you're probably better off just listening and not mm -hmm. asking questions in the form of a survey, would you pay Correct. X to have treatment that, Y? Yes. Has that been your experience as well? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And if I had a dollar for every time a woman comes in and says, just make me look younger, <laughs> um, thinner, you know, that's like what you hear all day. Yeah. Yeah. God, if only they could crack the code of, <laughs> of, uh, of the fountain of youth and, and uh, anti-aging right. and combating telomere rays reduction. I know there's scientists attacking this problem. Aubrey de Grey is one of them, and, and there's some right. other folks studying hibernation. And Anyway, we're, I think we're a mile away or years away before we have the, uh, the true antidote. But for now, Botox, 
non-invasive treatments, they're king yeah. and queen. So, um, but in any case, let's talk about your online store. So what I would imagine has been a case for you. Actually, let me, let me, let me start at the beginning. <laughs> Instead of jumping to the end. When did you incorporate an online retail component with the business? Is that a new year, bolt-on? Year, or has that been years ago? Years. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so getting back to again the vision and the trends. So my web person, her name is Meg, has worked with me over 20 some years doing my websites. And we actually, we are redoing a new website as we speak. So if you're looking at, you love my website, but it's going to change. <laughs> so she's at home working and her husband's like, you're doing another website for her? And she's like, yeah, we're rebranding. We, we've changed everything. And it's, it's become a joke because we're always like redoing things. But back when I first opened, there was a client who had her own business and she was just starting to make websites. And I was a website up and running and we sold products on there, like displaying them back in 19, like 98. Wow. I know it's crazy. And so it's just, it's been, you know, it's been my thing. Like we've always had the website and sold things on there, whether it was gift cards or products, we've been doing it since then. Wow. So, so since 98, so uh, my math game is a little weak, 22 years, you've mm -hmm. been running a retail side of the business. Wow. Yeah. So is there, have you seen a correlation with Different, you know, let me, let me back up. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, the, the dot com bubble in 01, mm -hmm. 08, now COVID. Have you seen an increase in online sales when the economy nosedives? Um, so, right now, what you're seeing because of the whole COVID thing, we do a lot of curbside pickup as well. Mm. And I've also found that clients will look for things that they can find cheaper on sites. Yeah, sure. Okay. So you have to market certain products. Like we're switching things up now because I have a skincare line called the Gedgy and it's from Italy. And I have been the importer for that for almost 30 years now. And you can't find it in the U S um, so that is going to be one of my main focuses on my website will be the Vigeggi products. Huh. Because you can't find it anywhere. And so I'm going to really, you know, focus in on that versus just everyday products because the client will go and search and try to find a retail coupon or, you know, some deal on websites. Yeah. Yeah. So I do I, it. I'm sure you yeah, do it too. <laughs> We're always price shopping, right? Of course. If there's a retail code. Of yeah. Course yeah. Do it. And I don't blame them. And there's free shipping and there's this and there's that. So the free shipping I do offer or free curbside pickup. Um, but I'm gearing more towards selling things that are not available everywhere. Right because it's a huge problem right now, you know, with Amazon. And I mean, there's just so many places to buy things now online. So it's a little bit tough to sell everything on your shelf if other retailers are carrying it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because Amazon is, is eating the damn world. Eating, yeah, exactly. And, and that'll only exacerbate if we enter another mm -hmm. wave of, of profuse right. rampant omnipresent lockdowns across the Correct. the globe. So, yeah. So yeah. if you're going to retail stuff, like try to pick things, you know, that are unusual that you can't get everywhere mm. in our industry Yeah. because they will look and search for things. So to that point then with, with respects to pricing, um, mm -hmm. I would imagine you have price shoppers as well. 
So, mm -hmm. and I, I haven't looked, I, don't, I actually don't, I don't know offhand if you're, I guess I could look, um, if you actually include pricing on your website. Um, uh, pricing which, on retail or uh, services? No, no, your services. Oh yeah, I have the prices on there, yes. Okay, okay, because I was gonna say, I wonder, because I wonder that same phenomenon, yeah, I see that here with your massages and uh, Venus and the rest of it, okay. So you do have prices so, up for a lot of this stuff. Yes, um, like certain things like the Venus, because it's, um, it's sold in a series. We have to like do a consultation first. So those prices are not on there because the client does need to come in and sit and have a consultation and really decide on body parts or face parts because everything's priced, you know, like per, per unit. So right, like an right. one unit, but if she wants her love handles, that's a second unit. Yeah. So, you want to do consultations with that. So those type of things we don't put on price wise because we need to, you know, and it's a higher ticket item. So you don't want to scare away the customer. So it's best to bring them in and do the consultation. Yeah. But as far as, you know, the facials, waxing, spray tan, that's all listed on there with prices because those are, you know, I try to keep a pretty standard price, you know, in the industry. And in March, I um, actually had expanded my business and was renovating. And we closed March 7th so that I could finish decorating and cleaning and getting everything ready and open March 17th as like a, a pre grand opening. Hmm. And the government shut us down March 15th. So, and then hmm. we didn't open until May 19th. Gosh. So I would at, at that point is we were redoing the website. I was going to have a new service menu and I was going to do a price increase because I had not done a price increase in a long time. And I chose not to do the price increase because, and even though a lot of places are now increasing their prices or charging, you know, COVID charge or whatever, I chose not to do that. Mm. So I'm holding off doing any price increase right now. Hmm. I just feel it's not the time. No, no, certainly not. I think a lot of people are struggling and they do want to come in for treatments, but mm -hmm. we're, yeah. we're entering it in. Prices now, I just, yeah, I, I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, no, I like, I actually like that you don't list your pricing because I think the moment you do that, and, mm -hmm. and it makes sense for certain products, treatments, Massage, yes. for example, everybody right. charges sixty to eighty an hour for massage. It's exactly, just boilerplate, so it's just, whatever. Who cares, price, right? Right. But but those other treatments that you offer that are not really, I don't want to say a com well, for lack of a better term, that are not so much a commodity, that mm -hmm. require a consultation. Listeners, you should absolutely follow suit and do what Martha's done, which is remove your pricing, because the truth mm -hmm. is, it doesn't serve the customer well if they see the price mm -hmm. and they before they see the value on helping right. them get from where they are yeah. in the current state right. to their future state. You're doing mm -hmm. them a disservice. You've got to yank the prices off for things that are not commodity type uh, services like, like Venus Legacy or other body right. contouring products, et cetera. Correct. Heard of, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing things right. Not only that, but you have, you, you have actually the first um, tool that I've seen. It's called Bowtie. It looks like your chat bot. Um, yes. So as a quick aside, what, what is the impact been with that guy with, uh, with adding that? So that's a little robot. So I brought that on because when we first opened with COVID, we pretty much all schedule our days so that we're not on top of each other. Even though I have plenty of room and I have a lower level and an, an, an upstairs with treatment rooms, we try not to pack everyone in at the same time and everything's by appointment right now so we don't really do walk-ins everything's just by appointment to keep everything and everyone safe and i really didn't need a full-time receptionist at this time of opening because i didn't know how busy we were going to be um if we were here by ourselves basically we would check out our person because i would you know do my service take my client check her out which i I'll get back to, which I find even better now that I sell more products and I spend more time with my client. 
So I brought on Bowtie, my little robot, because I never miss a phone call. It books appointments for you. It, if someone's on my website, it'll do a chat. If the bow tie can't answer something, it'll come immediately to my phone hmm. and let me know that the client has a question. So I can totally converse with that client immediately. Wow. So it's really been helpful because not having a full-time receptionist, um, the bow tie has really taken the place of a receptionist. Wow. Do you anticipate hiring a receptionist once we enter a state of normalcy again? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I will okay, definitely okay. Be a receptionist. Yes. But right now the bow tie has been great. And what I found getting back to where spending more time with the clients, you know, I, I book a client and then I leave enough time after the client because I have to clean mm. and clean, you know, I have to sanitize everything. I use machinery, like everything has to be sprayed down. So I leave plenty of time in between to get all that done. But what I found was I'm spending more time with my client instead of finishing a facial and just saying to my receptionist, here's what I recommend for my client. You know, I wrote everything down for her. Um, these are the products I recommend. This is the next facial I recommend. Now I'm the one actually taking the time with that client. Hmm. And I find my sales are higher, even though I'm not as busy pre COVID, I'm making more out of sales with the client by doing that one-on-one. -on -one. So my, my gut reaction is as we figure out what is culpable in that increase in, in revenue, my guess is that the extra time provides you space to do further consultation to yes. figure out exactly what they want to do and accomplish, mm -hmm. not just rushing them in and out of the, the shop like cattle, which you exactly. would be forced to if you were maxed out, had a receptionist, no time in the day. Oh my God, you got to right. turn and burn. Yeah, so and that's, your that's interesting. Your is next waiting, you got to you know get your room ready. Now it's just. I don't know. I, I feel like I like this pace. I like spending sure, the yeah. time. And there's times too that like, I'll be like, oh, you know what? I have time. You, we were talking about Venus. Let me do a complimentary five minute, 10 minute treatment on you so you can feel the, the treatment. And, you know, if I'm book solid, I wouldn't have had time for that. Mm, yeah, yeah. We would have had to book that on another day. And so I feel like I'm, I'm spending more time with the client and it's, it's much better in sales and they're signing up for more things. So I think the implication of that result that you're experiencing is that for those listeners that think that when a new customer comes in and a customer says, I want X, and then that listener thinks, okay, well, that's what the customer wants. I'm just going to deliver mm -hmm. that to them and that's it. Consultation mm -hmm. over. Those that are doing that are missing out on probably massive revenue opportunities if they would just be a bit more disciplined and diligent to do deeper dive type consultations to really explore where that customer is on their beauty journey mm -hmm. and where right. they want to go to help them get there. And that takes time. And so maybe the, uh, maybe the takeaway is that our listeners should find a way to free up more time in their calendar, maybe take on fewer customers each day and be more attentive to give space and, to do that. And we're so trained to, you know, productivity, book solid. Yeah, but I right. find that I'm selling more, having more one-on-one -on -one time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Personally speaking from experience, when I sell something and this doesn't happen anymore ever because I refuse to allow it to happen. But when mm -hmm. I just rush to a deal, it's always mm -hmm. been a disaster because I miss something important about what they need, right. what their wants are, et cetera. And you've got to take the time to uncover all that. Otherwise both parties lose and it's not, it's not a winning formula. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be slow. And there's a saying from the Navy SEALs, which is slow is smooth and smooth <laughs> is fast. So right. go slow is the point. Okay. Wow. 
we're already 40 minutes in, 45 minutes in, and I feel like I have another thousand questions to ask you. But let's, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have you on the show again here at some point. But oh, I um, love it. Let's, yeah, this is a lot of fun, and you are a wealth of knowledge. So I'm, I'm happy to make this happen. Uh, but let's change gears here a bit. Now, usually the end of the show is thematically oriented around levers and landmines. So mm -hmm. levers are the things that you've done that have produced outsized positive gains for the business, decisions on products or whatever, hiring, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Landmines are the exact opposite. So I'll, I'll ask the question a bit differently because I think, frankly, I've been asking the question uh, a bit trash-like. Okay. <laughs> so here's a different way of putting it. So with respect to the positive changes in the business, the net gains, revenue, improvements, whatever, what are the 20% of the things that you have done or the thing that you have done that has produced that 80% of the positive outcome? Um, so definitely the machinery, like the legacy, um, the different facial machines have definitely increased productivity and sales. Um, a lot of those treatments are sold in series. And once they do, like for instance, with the legacy, like they'll start, maybe they'll do their face, but then that leads to the neck and then they have great results. And then that will lead to an abdominal treatment. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. then that's working great. So why not do my thighs? Yeah. So all of that definitely is huge in your ticket of sales. So finding equipment that is multivariate or uh, yes. multiplicitous in what it can do has been yeah. game changing. Yeah. Great results. Yeah, yeah. So well, you, you know, research that. Sure. What about Venus won you over? I'm curious about their device and what probably so to, when to go I, with them. I looked at different things because I looked at like cool sculpting. Yeah. And I had a couple of clients that had that done and they weren't, they didn't love it. They didn't get great results. So I had reached out to Venus because I, I researched a couple different machines, but I asked them to leave the machine, the demo with me for a while before I purchased it because I had to make sure it worked. And they agreed to it and left me the, the demo for two months. Wow. And I started, you know, reaching out to my clients. I would do some complimentary treatments and we were getting such great results that after two months, then I decided to purchase the machine and launch it. Yeah. Huh. So I wanted cool. to make sure because it was an expensive machine. Um, clients are going to spend, you know, a good amount of money on these yeah. treatments. So it's got to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, you're exactly right. If you, if you add something that's not piloted or tested mm -hmm. and it ends up being a farce, it ends up being a, just something that does not contribute and deliver, right. it's, mm -hmm. it's, you're shooting yeah. everyone in the foot. Right, yeah. <laughs> you and, do that. and I learned my lesson back in the laser hair removal days. So, you know, I brought the laser hair removal and like, like I said, like 2000, 2001, nobody was doing laser hair removal. So this was like a whole new, you know, type of service. And the treatment worked great on some people, but on some it did not work at all. And it had to be like the perfect skin tone, you know, the right color hair. Um, it, it just had all of these, you know, requirements that it had to be like the perfect person to get the treatment. Now, of course, over the years, the technology has changed and you know the the machines out there now you know are remarkable and do a lot of different things than my old machine did but i learned my lesson because i spent a lot of money on that machine and i had to refund a lot of people because they weren't happy and if i didn't refund them it would not be good for my business yeah yeah wow so i i've learned my lesson well that's a perfect uh, answer to the question that I have not yet asked, but was slated for the next question, which was uh, going to be, what has been the most frustrating decision that you've made in terms of well, outcomes so far? It sounds like it was probably that. <laughs> it's <was laughs> right. probably that. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, now we know. 
So I guess here, here's my last question for you before we jump off and, and hang our hats for the show today. Um, what would you say is the number one bit of advice that you would give aspiring beauty business owners, spa owners, whatever, that are looking to build up and scale out their business? Maybe the one lesson that you've learned that you cling to as the, the thing, the compass, <laughs> the North Star, whatever. Is there any advice that you would leave our listeners with? Well, I just, like I said, do your research, um, you know, see what, what the market is around you. You know, I, like I always, and, and I, I don't look at competition. Like if someone has Venus legacy down the road, I don't care. Like that doesn't bother me because the clients that come here aren't going to that facility and vice versa. So it doesn't matter to me if they're right down the street but I like to know what's around me. At least five, 10 mile radius. I check out the prices. Um, you know, I like to see what the competition is offering because that's so important when you're gonna launch something to know, you know, exactly putting it together the right way. Yeah. That I highly recommend and um, Picking, like I said, picking and choosing things that will go well with what you are offering now. And if you're going to offer something that you've never offered, make sure you know exactly what you're getting and researching it and then launch it the right way. Yeah, which is a topic in and of itself <laughs> on how to launch <laughs> devices correctly and implement and roll them out intelligently right. instead of uh, having to be a disaster. So. Another topic for our next show. There it is. I'll add that to the queue for uh, things to explore the next time we have you on. So, yes. Well, I, yeah, I, I've, I've loved our time together. I know we have four minutes in our time mate, before we have to get back to our, our day jobs and the rest of it. So uh, where can the listener connect with you if they wanted to uh, get into your orbit? How do they find you? They can email me. Um, it's Martha Beauty Guru at gmail.com. And I am on social media, so they can inbox me on Facebook. It's La Look Boutique. And it's also um, on Instagram, La Look Boutique. So if Love they're it. on any social media, they can totally message me or they can email me. Very cool. Well, I've got to keep my girlfriend away from you. You have a dog, Flanagan, <laughs> that, I, that she would kidnap at a moment's notice. Flanagan it's, uh, is the best. Yeah, keep cute, going on the new pooch. One. Nice. He's Very going cool. To be in the shopping bag. Yes. <laughs> You'll have to start selling dog t shirts or something as well in honor of Flanagan. Yeah. So, anyhow, well, we're out of time. Martha, I appreciate you uh, making the time to do this and uh, thanks for being on. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.